determination to meditate every day. Do you mean determination to meditate every day or a drink or just for one session? Every day. Okay. If you know what will be the benefit of your meditation, then that itself uh, will make it sure that you will meditate. If you know that meditation is the only solution to be happy, then there is no way how you would not meditate. If you know that meditation is the only way how you can keep yourself calm and peaceful, then there is no way how you would not meditate. But these might be uh, maybe conclusions that you would take after you meditate because it's necessary to achieve certain kind of peace and happiness in meditation in order to really believe that it will bring you peace and happiness. But it's necessary to have a good friend in the first place. If you have a friend who meditates and who inspires you, then he will always or she will always encourage you to practice. Then you will associate that friend or maybe a group of people who meditate. Then when you associate them, they support you, they are there with you, you know, you are one of them, one of the group, and so you are all good friends and you know that you can always share with them your experience, your worries, your, um, your knowledge. And they will also share with you, so then you will grow together. Having a good friend is the very basis of the progress, said the Buddha. It's actually 100% of the progress. So to get really determination to meditate every day, it's good to have a very close relationship with a lady or gentleman who meditate every day. It's very good to have a close relationship with somebody who is really experienced and who uh, does the practice. So a relationship uh, is a broad English word. It means that you associate them. It means that you speak with them, that you uh, can contact them anytime, and that possibly you meet them regularly, every day, or once in a week, or twice a week. That's why it's really good in, uh, uh, in the foreign countries, I mean, non-Buddhist non countries, such as Czech Republic, where I'm from, that there are these special groups, special meditation groups. And these groups have their special days when they meet every, every week. So they meet, let's say, every Wednesday or every Thursday. You don't have this in Myanmar, or at, as, as far as I know, I've never heard of this in Myanmar, but in other countries, this is quite common. And in our country, this is very well known for among the little number of Buddhists. So they would always meet, you know, let's say every Thursday or every Saturday or every Sunday, whatever is the day that the group decides upon. And then they just meet that day. And if somebody doesn't come, then uh, they wonder, like, hey, what happened? This person didn't come. They would, maybe not for the session, but you know, like if the person doesn't come for a long time, because they are good friends, they will contact each other. Hi, are you okay? You know, I didn't see you in our meeting. You know, and they may share what happened in the meeting to encourage the person to come again. So this way, they are encouraged to meditate every week. And when they meet every week, they discuss the Buddha's teachings. You know, they discuss the practice and how they practiced. If they have a teacher, then of course it's better than if they are all uh, just training. And then they are encouraged by the teacher or by each other to meditate every day. They see, hey, look at this gentleman, he meditates every day. Maybe I also should meditate every day. Just because they meet that gentleman every day, sorry, every week, they get the idea that this is the way to do it. You know? So they're always inspired. They always find inspiration you know, in the person who is teaching them or who is uh, uh, who who is practicing intensively? The same thing is with meditation retreats. You will be inspired to go to meditation retreat every year if you have a, a close friend who goes for a meditation retreat every year. 
So to meditate every day, it's really good to have a close relationship with somebody who, whether lady or gentleman, who really meditates every day. Then uh, they will, of course, encourage you to meditate every day, and then you will meditate every day. But it's not always like that, you know? Different people need different things. Like, for example, I meditated every day, and I didn't have any friend, I had zero friend. I didn't know any Buddhist in anywhere in the world. I started meditation because I wanted to get psychic powers. So I thought, okay, so I need to learn how to fly in the sky. I need to learn how to know another person's mind. I need to know how to disappear and appear somewhere else, anytime, anywhere I want. And so I meditated because I wanted those second powers. You know, I saw that benefit of meditation. This meditation practice or whatever meditation practice will give me this benefit. And I really, really wanted that benefit. So of course I was meditating every day. And I was not meditating just 15 minutes in the morning, or 15 minutes in the evening. No, 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 no. I was meditating one and a half hours in the morning, one and a half hours in the evening, and five times one and a half hours on Saturday and Sunday. When you know what you expect from your meditation, then of course that will propel you on the way. Then that will give you so much energy because you know, hey, this is what I want. This is what I want to achieve. And I need it as soon as possible. So this is how you can uh, get the desire, how you can determine to meditate every day. Either you have somebody who inspires you and you want to be as, you want to come to, to their level of standard and you feel that meditation really will help you or you know the benefit of meditation and you seriously need it. There are so many possible benefits that you can find in meditation and that can entirely change your timetable for many, many years. It may be health, you know, you may worry about your health and you may hear that meditation is good for your health. Okay, you worry for your health, so you meditate, you know, and nothing will stop you. Or you worry that there will be something dangerous in your area. You're afraid of some person or you're afraid of something happening. Then you meditate every day if you believe that it will help you. It will. I'm pretty sure that if you practice the correct way, then it will help you to get, at least to withstand the difficulties. But you need to believe it, otherwise you will not practice, you know. You need to believe that after you get a degree, you will get a good job. Otherwise, you will not want to get a degree, right? In the same way, you need to believe that uh, everyday meditation will help you to be healthy or successful or safe or whatever you want from it in order to meditate every day. So that's what propelled me, you know. I believe that meditation will give me the psychic powers. So I meditate every day. Did you get the psychic powers in the end? Or you cannot talk about it? <laughs> so although many people would really love to believe that I have psychic powers, I do not have any of the six psychic powers mentioned in the scriptures. I do have power over the mind, which is a synonym of the word psychic power, but out of the six powers mentioned in our scriptures, I have none. Number one, I am not able to levitate in the air without uh, having a flight ticket. <laughs> I am not able to disappear and appear somewhere else. I'm not able to go through walls apart from going through door. I'm going, I'm not able to go through mountains or to dive in the earth and appear somewhere else. I'm not able to walk over the water. I'm not able to change this body into a body of a bird or of a soldier or of a dragon. 
I'm not able to change the size of this body to be smaller or to be bigger. So this is the first psychic power out of the six mentioned in the scriptures, mentioned by the Buddha himself. I'm not able to hear the sound or the speech of gods or beings in hells or in animal realm or in the realm of ghosts or anywhere beyond the reach of my human fleshly ear. That's the second power. The third power is uh, that the person, that the meditator is able to see, they are able to visit the heavenly realms, the realms of hell, animals, or ghosts by their mind. They are able to see them. And they would be able to see what happened in the past and what's, what's going to happen in the future, what's far, what's near. So I don't have that power either. The power number four is to know another person's thought. So I do not have the power to know another person's thought Yes, there are people who think that I can, that I have that power. No, I don't have that power at all. So there was this case when two ladies, one lady and a nun, they were just talking to me and I just presumed, you know, what they might be thinking about as I'm talking. And it just randomly happened that I was right. So. As I was talking, I already started to answer to their possible questions because I didn't want to deal with their disagreement. And I just had the luck, not with anybody else, I just had the luck to be always right. I had the luck to always, you know, to catch where they might disagree with me and immediately reply to them without them telling me to. It was absolutely by chance. I absolutely didn't know anything that whether it might be true or not. And they, of course, they didn't tell me anything. They were just wondering what's happening, and I didn't know that they're wondering. I had no idea what's their, what's their thought. Then another day, we met again uh, with one of the two, and uh, she asked me, "Do you know?" And I have no idea what she asking me about. <laughs> So I presume she's asking me about whether I know the Buddha's teachings, whether I know the impermanence and satisfactoriness, not self, not self, whether I have experienced them. So I say, well, yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then they made their conclusion, you know, like, yes, he knows our mind. He can <laughs> read our, our thoughts, you know. So then after several weeks, you know, they, they shared it with me, you know, they said, you know, we actually think that you can read our minds. And I was so surprised, I didn't have that idea. How come that you would ever, you know, have that idea? I have no idea what you think about, unless you tell it to me. So uh, that can happen, you know, sometimes uh, you are just lucky to to, you know, to presume what the other person thinks. And if you're lucky too many times, they may charge you. <laughs> charge you with a label. You know? So no, I have absolutely no clue what you're thinking about. Zero. Okay, so if you don't tell it to me, I absolutely have no idea. And I have it even worse, because people, uh, usually people have this ability to presume what another person may think. You know, they're trying to presume it at least from their facial expression or from their gestures. But commonly, I will not be able to realize that, even, even that, you know, because there are these special kinds of characters of human beings, and I have this special character that I have more of this logical thinking, but not so much of this social thinking. So, usually people would make a joke, and I have no idea that it's a joke. I think it's really serious. And uh, that, of course, made my childhood slightly more difficult. But that's the way it is. So everybody has their advantages and disadvantages when they're born. So I have this disadvantage that I have absolutely no clue what you think about unless you tell it to me. And when I guess, it's just a guess. So 
if I'm right, that's very beautiful, but uh, it's only a guess. All right, so this was the fourth psychic power. Number five is remembering past lives. I have absolutely no idea what could be my past life. Sometimes I think maybe I was a god because I really enjoy sensual pleasures. But sometimes I think maybe I was a monk because I was uh, I always wanted to teach somebody something since the time I was a, a little kid. You know? I always wanted to teach somebody something. I always wanted to admonish and say, hey, this is right, hey, this is wrong. You know? And it's very natural for me to teach and to uh, help people, you know? It's very natural. I feel really natural in this position where I can share my experience of Dhamma. It's just so, so natural for me, you know? So it's not something that I would... I did practice very hard. I did learn how to speak, how to behave. I had to correct a lot and a lot of my manners and ways of speech and behavior and gestures and reactions. I had to learn so much. But it feels very natural to me. I feel like this position of uh, helping others to be happy, of supporting others on their way is very, very natural to me. So maybe I was a monk and maybe I was in Myanmar because the Burmese language is very natural. But I don't know. It's possible that I just came Back from hell. No. Then, this was the fifth power. The sixth power is the power of being entirely free from all greed, hatred, and ignorance. And I absolutely have greed, I have uh, hatred, I have ignorance. I would not be able to share with you whether they are as much as they were in the past or whether I have um, seriously uh, decreased them. Those are things that monks should keep for themselves. But I do have greed, hatred, ignorance. And I do have a lot of work in front of me. So I do not have any of the psychic powers, any of the six psychic powers mentioned in the scripture. But what I can share with you as a psychic power is the power to control the mind. I am able to generate peace and love any moment, anytime, anywhere, if the mindfulness arises. So I am not mindful continuously, but if the mindfulness comes to the mind and there is the clear knowledge, hey, this is hatred, I need to be loving, immediately love arises in the mind. And this is what I want to share with everybody as the first basis of their, of their meditation practice. So if you are meditating, I first of all, I expect that you will have this ability to create any kind of mental object, any moment, any time, as much as you want. And this is so good that in meditation, because then in meditation you want to concentrate on breath, so you concentrate on breath, and it doesn't get into any other object. You don't happen to observe your feelings or to, uh, to do loving kindness. You just observe your breath. If you do loving kindness, you will, uh, you will never think of your breath. If you do observing your feelings, you will never have the, the idea about the materiality. When you observe the materiality, never the idea of feelings will arise. If it arises, it's only because you want to. It's only because you seriously want to know what's happening right now in terms of feelings, then you know the feelings. If you seriously want to understand the materiality, you seriously see only the materiality and nothing else. And then when you want to look at them from outside and you want to see how they are connected together, how they reciprocate, how they communicate, how, how they influence each other, then you would be able to do that. So. For me, it's a basic thing to have this basic course level, course, con course control over the mind. So if you want to concentrate on a certain object, yes, that's what you do. That's what the mind does. If you want to concentrate or not on another object, then that's what the mind does. So there is no, no attachment to one object 
to such an end, to such a level that you know that you're attached, but you just can't do anything. So this would be um, this this would be something uh, I would never appreciate about me, and of course, it's something that I want to uh, that I that I think is not good, and I would like to teach you how to get rid of that and how to get the control. How to become really free? How to get total freedom from um, from your mind?